Hi, welcome to another video on fixing stuff around the house. Today I'm going to try and fix my washing machine, which has had a long standing problem uh, in that I can't use the high temperature washers. I can only use um, certain programs. I'll show you. If I zoom in here, you can see I've marked on the dial the washes I can use and the ones that I can't. Now, what happens if I use one of the ones that is disallowed on, on there? What happens is there's a short circuit, the washing machine cuts off and it trips the residual current uh, breaker in the main switchboard and all the sockets go out downstairs and what I'm going to do is demonstrate this in case you don't believe me uh, by putting the washing machine on and tripping it unfortunately that means I've got to go and reset all sorts of things but I'm going to do it anyway just to demonstrate to myself and then I thought how am I going to fix this there must be an earth leak somewhere and it must be happening when the machine is trying to heat the water I think because the only wash that definitely doesn't do that is the so-called quick wash which just takes in water at whatever temperature it comes in and washes the clothes and that's generally the one I use I can get away with using the 40 sometimes and I think that would be when the water is hot enough it doesn't need to put the heater on. So I'm convinced it's the heater and I'm going, I've ordered a new part and I've got it so what I'm hoping to do after this demonstration is fit it and show a working washing machine with this long-standing pro problem which has annoyed me for many years and I never got around to fixing it. So first of all let's put the washing machine on and see it trip out. So I've got it all connected up. I've got the water on. Just checking that. Yes the water's on. Gonna put it. I'm not gonna put any clothes in it because otherwise, uh, and let's put it at a high temperature with a cross on it and stick it on. Now it won't be long. As soon as that fills up, it's going to trip. It's going to trip the electricity. Oh, it's not doing it. Come on. <laughs> I can't believe it. Why is it? Why is it working? This is ruining my theory. Ah, did you hear that? Did you hear that? That's the power gone off. fridge is now, um, light is gone out, everything's gone dead. There, here we are at the main switch box and you can see the residual or the earth leakage circuit breaker has tripped. So what I'm going to do is, I've just switched the machine off, I'm going to turn that back on. That's it reset, I had to go and uh, turn the washing machine off. And now it's reset because it's uh, um, quite a large current has tripped it and sometimes it doesn't reset straight away, it takes a little while. So that's it done now. Right, we're back to the washing machine. Um, so now what I need to do is uh, turn it to 
empty the washing machine. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put it on spin. I'll turn it back on. And drain the machine. You can see it's working again fine. Okay, so now what I want to do is replace the heater element. And I've ordered a part, a heater element. I didn't want to take away apart the machine to see if this was the right element before I ordered it. So I'm hoping it's correct. I ordered it for model 17055 it said it would fit. My model is 17054E. I mean these Electra washing machines are basically hot point washing machines. Electra was a brand used by the Hydroelectric in Scotland um, and they were just rebranded hot points basically. So um, I've ordered I've ordered a spare part. This is it here. This is the spare part. As you can see, I got it from um, uh, my spares, which I've used a few times. I think it's called my spares. I'll put the link in the description. Heater, hot point in our Indesit or Ariston genuine spare. Now it looks, it looks correct. I know that mine looks something like that because I've got a photograph of it. In particular, this end thing looks the same as mine, but I won't know till we get the one out. So what I'm going to do now is hopefully take the front of the machine without having to take the top off. I'm not sure if that's possible, I can't remember. Usually I take the top off and that involves disconnecting it from the water uh, and water coming out as it always does. I'm hoping to do it without having to do that. Now I'm going to be following uh, essentially the disassembly that's mentioned in the washing machine manual which I happen to have, which was a good investment. Of course these machines I'm talking about are old hot point machines. I mean, this machine was in the house when I first moved in and that was in 2003, so it must be well over 20 years old. But it's given me very little trouble. So, the first thing to do is to remove this so that this rubber part, oh, I can feel some heat in there from the water. To remove the rubber from here so that we can get the front off because the heater element is underneath here. Just to show you the manual for a very similar machine, this is what I'm going to be following. So it looks Quite similar, actually. The um, the way that the uh, front is held on is slightly different, but it's very, very similar machine. And this is a hot point machine mentioned in the manual. Right here goes. This just this is the bit that's different to the machine in the manual. I think this just pushes it up. Yep. Missed that on camera, but there's a little slot there. You push that and this comes out of here like that 
I pushed in that through the screwdriver and it comes out like that. Hope that's easy to see on there. Just zoom in on that a wee bit. So this bit here came out. So now I can take that off and take this off as well. And then so that goes in like that. And the wire and the um the wire can be removed. Well that's that and then what we can do and then we've got oh we've got that, we've got to be careful of that. Now we can take this which is the thing that connects seals the the drum we can push that in like this okay so that's now free of the outside now as I said I'm hoping I can do this without taking the machine out so the first thing I've got to do is pull this knob off pushes on. So that's that out. Now we've got to remove this. Now I just remember that it saves in the manual to take the drawer out. But you know what? That is an incredible pain. I notice there's some screws missing. There's some screws missing in there. This screw is half out. You would think, and I noticed the screws from the bottom, as we'll see, are not there. So somebody has forgotten, who would that be? Somebody has forgotten to put in all these screws. So I need to put these back. But I think what I'm going to do is remove these screws, and hopefully this bit will just lift off. That's what I'm hoping, with this in there. Because taking that and Getting this back in is a real pain. Just for that, rem I just remember that from last time. So what's this screw is already half out? This one. Out. Well, this one's loose as well. Tell you, whoever put this machine together last time didn't do it properly. Yeah, I know who that was. What I could really do this was this my short screwdriver. There must be some more screws like this knocking about. Right, and then if we take these two out, try not to drop them. I'm hoping this whole front like a boodle. Yes, it does. Ah, this is why they say to take the drawer out because otherwise this is going to be hanging like that. Oh, I don't want to take it out, honestly now. It's such a fat getting it back in. I think I actually ended up having to take. So, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it hanging, just from experience. And I'm going to take these screws off through the through the opening like that. I suppose the risk is I'm going to break this. And I tell you, it's so much better to not take that drawer out. 
it is a faff. But what I ended up having to do was dismantle all this because it was so tight to get back in. Okay, I'll take this off. It should be nice to be here. do is it is remove the door latch so without moving the door latch then I won't be able to take this door off so yeah should have taken that off so um here is the door latch that I need to take off This is also a faff to get back on, so it's well worth taking note of how this is put together. Just taking this off, it took me ages to work out how this thing went back together again. So let's try and do it. There's the top cover. Which screws. Oops. Now it has got a pin there to help you when you're putting it back together, so it must be like that. And then you've got to line these holes up. It's a real faff. So it has got a pin that locates into there. Okay, into that slot there. So now that off. Do it like that. And then it removes the front. And now we've got access to the heater. Yeah, look. It's varying a bit, but this one's showing a positive 7 between the earth and either, I think that's the neutral, I'm not sure, uh, 10 kilo ohms, another sort, I mean that's where the problem is, let's try the other side. This is also showing a reading with Earth. So in other words, there's a short circuit. Here's the spare part. Uh, I'm just going to open it.
These parts should only be fitted by qualified persons having technical competence, applicable product knowledge and suitable tools and test equipment and some other warnings. Servicing must be preceded by earth continuity and insulation and resistance checks. Well, of course, this is not really what I'm doing. It's not really that because you know that you need the special equipment for uh, testing high voltage resistance uh, air flakes. I, I don't have that. I've just got a multimeter. But let's. No, I don't know. What's in the green? I can't actually see. Either. Uh, is there a green? Well, oh, there's my earth. Uh, there's my earth. And uh, one of these will be the light. Well, that one's grey, so I presume it's. Oh, it seems to have an extra. Oh no. It seems to have an extra. What's this for? Oh, well, hopefully we'll find out. Oh no, and this looks different. Shucks. Well, so this might not be the right part. Okay, well, I'm hoping that's not important, <laughs> or it is underneath this cover somewhere. Huh? No, it isn't. Oh no, it's different. It definitely is different. But it's only this that's different. Is it? of similar dimensions. I wonder if this is I wonder if that's a thermocouple or something for measuring temperature. And then it'll still work. Okay, but before going any further, let's measure between here and here. Put it on the same scale. Notice I've dumped my yellow meter going for this one. Oh, so that's also got a very low resistance. Oh, it's about the same. Of course, it's AC, of course, but, but even if I put this on the highest scale, I'm not getting a reading between the, the neutral or the live, which I am getting on this one. Yeah, look. Okay, so this this one's I would say dodgy from that, and I'm hoping this one is still gonna fit. So let's get it out. How do you 
get it. So there's a bolt. So I'm hoping we just remove that bolt. Oh yeah, that looks like a, a temperature sensor. There, that looks like a temperature sensor um, on the device. Oh, so, <laughs> one of the reasons I'm, I was a bit disappointed there is because that cost me £35, which is outrageous, really. But um, I thought it was worth it. You know, save the washing machine. Okay, let's remove that. I've got to take the drum apart. Taking the drum apart means I've got to take all these clips off. I was hoping I could just pull it out. sensor which is built in to this oh, it even looks very similar yeah. ah. I don't want to take the drum off such a faff to get off. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to have to take the drum off. I can't see any other way. So it m means taking these clips off.
Ha. Right. Probably I'll need to give this a clean as well. And I need to get that heater out. All these things turn out to big jobs, don't they? Right. Um, I've been doing a bit of cleaning. This is what you end up doing when you've got an old machine. You end up... Uh, so I've just cleaned out this and I took the opportunity to clean this rubber. I know it still looks a bit mouldy, but it's actually not in bad condition. These rubbers... Uh, you know, I've never replaced this, so that's the original one, amazingly. Every time I'm in here, which isn't that often, uh, and I've cleaned outside of the drum here, and I've cleaned this. I've also cleaned around here and the element, because remember, the reason I'm doing that is because I might need still to put this one back if my spare part doesn't fit. I need to try and get this out. Uh, and fit the new one. I wonder how that's gonna. If that's. Oh, I wonder if that's actually a seal that I need to take off. Around here, there's supposed to be a sort of black washer. See that? I'm wondering if I need to take that off. And that is part of the. one is different. Oh no, it's different. Or is it? Or is that just part of that black bit that's shining, sticking through? I'm not sure. Oh, I just noticed something. Look at that. <laughs> There's the reason it's shorting. I don't know if you can see that, but there's some mar some parts of the there that have been worn away. No wonder it's shorting because the drum has been hitting and shorting. In fact, yeah, and has worn away. It's only been in here 20 years. Right, I've decided I'm going to cut it. I don't see any other way of getting this off. So this is a one-way trip. If it doesn't work, then I could be left with a washing machine that won't seal. But I've decided I'm going to try and cut this off. I don't see, because it's so swollen, it will not go through that gap anymore. There's really no option. I've just got to cut it off. God, this is turning into a nightmare job. Should be just a question of sliding it through and putting the new one in. Remember, this is my washing machine. If this doesn't work, I've got no washing machine. 
I'm not fixing this for fun. You'll see on YouTube people who do fix stuff for fun and they're very good at it. Like my mate Vince, which I watch. But he buys stuff that's broken. So it's if he doesn't fix it, it doesn't matter. This is real. <laughs> if you like. I've been hacking away at it. It's getting close. Still won't come out though. Oh, success. Blimey. What a job. Blimey. Yep, time to get back together. So, uh, let's put the element back in. I believe this was the right way round. Okay, this is what I'm thinking now, that although this is, looks different to this, um, and it is slightly different, I mean even the length of that bolt is slightly different, but that suddenly, I suddenly realised why that bolt is a different length, it's because this of course, it's compressed in with this. So in other words, it could actually be the same. See how that's so much further out? In other words, this bolt is for tightening this bracket against that rubber and then creating the seal. That's why the bolt is so much further out on that one. So I think it's, I think it is the same, after all. So, it goes on that way I believe, the grey on this side, so let's put it in. What can we do? And then I'm going to start tightening that bolt and see if that seals it up. Okay, here we go. Right. 
I'm gonna need my That's it. That's it. So now, is it going to work? This is it on the 60 degree cycle now. And so far it's not short circuited. That's gone a lot longer than it did before. But it might be that it's just not kicked in yet, the heater. I think what I need to do is a proper test. So, uh, I'm going to try washing some clothes. That's the uh, washing machine just gone right through a uh, uh, 60 degree wash. Uh, only trouble was when it was spinning, I could hear it hitting, and definitely now I know that that noise is caused by hitting the element, and no doubt. That's what eventually caused the element to short. And uh, there to be an earth leak, by the way, that's what I did to my finger. Uh, so yes, a successful fix. 
Right. Thank you for watching.